I'm Robin Gagnon. And I'm Eric Gagnon, and we sell restaurants. We started the nation's largest restaurant brokerage firm, We Sell Restaurants, over a decade ago. You can find us online at WeSellRestaurants.com. We are on your radio once a week with the leading authorities in this industry talking about subjects trending in the restaurant business. Tweet your own questions on our topics while we're on the air to our Twitter handle, that's Sell Restaurants. Post them on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash we sell restaurants. If we don't get to your question, we'll definitely follow up on social media. Our goal is to satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. If you have any ideas for our show or comments, you can email me. My email address is uh, eric, E-R-I-C, at wesellrestaurants.com. Are you wild about wine? Well, you're not the only one. This week, we are honing in on America's passion for the product. Wine bars are hot concepts that continue to grow. What's the difference between a wine bar and traditional wine service in a restaurant? Who is that wine bar customer? And how does their palate differ from the traditional restaurant client? And for that topic today, we're joined by some of the leading experts in the industry. First, we're joined today by Sammy Detta, who imagined a new concept of modern wine bar and brought it to life. Sammy grew up in Paris in the Montmartre uh, Quartier, uh, at the age of 19, he opened up his first business, a bakery called Le Petit Mitron, which is now run by his brother. In 2000, he decided to take a break and travel around the world. While traveling, he met his wife and settled in San Francisco, California. Shortly after, in 2003, he began his career as a restaurateur at Chouchou, a French bistro in Forest Hill District, where he met his longtime friend and future associate, Germain Michel. In 2006, the duo opened Amélie Wine Bar in San Francisco, located in the Nobile area. Emily is a beautiful representation of Sammy and Germain's creativity and a passion for wine. With its dramatic wall of lushly lit wine bottles and soaring wooden wine shelves, Emily fuses the cool American urban with chic Parisian modern, emerging as an irresistible blend of international hip. So, Sammy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, and after that introduction, you can see why I had Eric read that segment instead of myself. I'm going to handle the uh, American <laughs> West Coast, uh, East Coast version of today's guest. We're also joined by Shannon Wiley, owner of Atlanta's very own Wine Shoe. Shannon was born in Arkansas, grew up in the South. His love of flying led him to a career in the Air Force and Air Force Reserve and later employment at Delta Airlines. His wife, Nora, was born in Honolulu. Her dad's career in the military led her to Missouri, where she joined the Air Force Reserve to get through college, and that was a match made in heaven, where they met, fell in love, and married. Their Air Force Reserve jobs and ties kept them in the Kansas City area, where Nora sold real estate and attended law school, while Shannon worked locally in the reserves and commuted for his job at Delta Airlines. Finally retiring from the Air Force and kids off to college, they moved to Atlanta, settled in Castleberry Hill, a historic landmark district. Shannon was still working for Delta, flying to Europe, but Nora needed something else to do. They combined their love of wine, their need to own a bar, and their love of travel, good food, and many other things to recreate in Castleberry Hill something similar to the small tapas bars they had seen in Spain. After researching trial and error and a significant amount of regulatory hoops, they learned that they could only open a wine specialty shop, so they did. It is now uh, open, operating for business, named Wine Shoe Shannon. Welcome to the show. Hi, Robin. Eric, thanks for having me. Having me. Wow. It seems from both your bios that uh, you came to find this uh, wine segment through very different paths, and you're not alone in that. Americans consumed a lot of wine. That's a $13.8 billion industry. You know, I recently read that Napa Valley, which attracts 5 million visitors a year, recently displaced Disneyland as California's number one tourist attraction. Sammy, you moved out of the traditional restaurant ownership business into a wine bar. Tell us about Amelie. What is that customer experience like? I think uh, when I started the restaurant tour, it was a, just traditional, and uh, it wasn't like that much variety on by the glass uh, to try different wine. And uh, with my partner, we we vision like to open a, a wine bar with uh, at least having like at least. 20 different uh, wine by the glass and that's what we did it's like to try different variety and and different uh, uh, wine from a little bit all over the world and that's what we love so wonderful Shannon how about you tell us a bit about the customer experience in the wine shoe uh, it's uh, we try to find a provide a very personalized service uh, 
primarily uh, kind of emphasizing education so that when they come in, they can uh, feel comfortable around wine. Some people are very intimidated by it, and so uh, we try to make it uh, a little more lighthearted and formal and then give them, uh, like, the good baseline education so that they, from there, can spring on to more uh, uh, dedicated insights and pursuits in their wine uh, uh, wine enjoyment. You know, you actually brought up a really interesting point because I did some research for the show, and the Wine Council research I read for 2013 um, they found that like 50% of the wine drinkers are now these core drinkers, meaning that they drink wine on a fairly consistent weekly or monthly basis, and they're 25% of the U.S. adult population. And this is what I thought was amazing. They actually consume 93% of the 175 million cases. So it sounds like this clientele is extremely loyal. Is that what you find, Shannon? Yeah, I do find that quite a bit, and uh, I find that a lot of people come in and have a general idea of what they want. Uh, if, they're, if they've if they been doing it long enough, they're very open to experiencing uh, new wines, new flavors, different things that they haven't tried before. And, but they are very dedicated to the, uh, to the, to the wine itself as, uh, as more of a social aspect and, a, and uh, something to lighten up the evening as more as just like a, having a beer, which would be just a drink. A wine is an experience, and they enjoy the experience. Oh, I love that. Wine is an experience. And Sammy, how about you? Do you see the same thing in your in your in your market in your in your in your bar? Yeah, we do see a lot, uh, uh, very uh, very um, um, uh, how I say, a royal customer. They come often, like probably two to three times a week, and they always like try to to find another different wine and another experience. Uh, I'm uh, I'm totally hundred percent agree with uh, Sean. Good. Now, we talk about table wine sales, you know, more of a restaurant setting. They were up like 4.6% in dollars, while the restaurant industry as a whole was only up like 3%. So, huge, huge bump, you know, the table wine sales are outgrowing the actual food sales. Is this consistent with what you felt in both of your businesses, Sammy? Uh, I, I think uh, every year it's going up. So we 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 are open since 2006, and every year we have probably 15 to 20 percent up on revenue. So it's it's always like there's a new uh, new coming in, and they they really love the experience of being in the wine bar, not to be like in the pub or something like this, where is where there is a TV and there's a loud music. It's just an, uh, a very enjoyable. Uh, 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 situation for them and they really un- enjoy it so I think uh, the business is growing and uh, everybody told me like when the first when the first time I opened the wine bar everybody told me like uh, it's not gonna last it's just like something uh, uh, is gonna is gonna be like for a couple of years and the wine bar will be dead because the restaurant is always there so but we di- we we're doing well and uh, we we still strong and we go we growing every year so I'm very happy with the situation so far how about you, Shannon? Well, our our our, our uh, shop is a little bit different than what you'd consider a regular restaurant. Since we're a retail shop, we uh, se- we can only sell wine by the by the bottle. We can't sell by the glass. However, we can serve wine in conjunction with ed- education. And so, uh, while we can't sell it by the glass, we can sell the education. So, it, when you're looking through the front window, it may look very similar, like we're selling it by the glass. But we're actually uh, working hard to educate all our customers on what the wine is. Where we've kind of worked in with the restaurant industry is that we actually go to our distributors and say, hey, what wines are selling well in the restaurants so that once they've had it at our shop, they can go to some of the restaurants in the area and get that very same wine and have, have had tasted it and be able to describe it and, uh, and uh, get a lot more enjoyment out of that wine. Uh, so, Sammy, tell me, what is, or tell our listeners, actually, what's the difference between what you call a wine bar and a traditional wine service that you would receive in a restaurant? A traditional wine service is like you having probably, uh, let's see, you will have like probably five glass, uh, five wine by the glass, and the wine bar it's to 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 try to give as much as a, a different test and a different education to the people that want to try different things. Like uh, you don't have only Merlot or Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you, you have Shiraz. You have uh, you have multiple variety of wine. So people want to try it and they want to discover that that part. That's why we we uh, we the, I'm not I'm not um, uh, how you say that I'm not. Um, 
um, uh, I'm not surprised by the numbers you give us about the wine industry. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty uh, confident that it's going to grow and grow and grow again. So the, the difference is like you give to the people like at least like 20 different wine to test and to see how they will educate themselves about uh, the testing and uh, how you can explain the wine. Excellent. Now, Shannon, tell us, what in your mind are some of the keys to success in opening a wine shop? If some of our listeners, as we have individuals listening to us who are very intrigued about the hospitality industry, so they may want to open a restaurant, they may want to open a bar or get involved. What are some of the keys to success in opening a wine shop? Well, Robin, I guess one of the first things is to kind of have an idea of what the, you have in, in, in your mind as to how the shop is going to look and turn that into a good business plan. You have to kind of do the research, benchmark, look at what other shops are doing. And then something we ran into, which I mentioned in the bio, is the, uh, is the problems with the regulatory aspect, the codes and things like that. You may have a great plan, but if you find out that you've got to have a very expensive license or that it's not allowed in the area, that may cause you to adjust. Then you get into more of the mundane things, such as a good location that, you know, like with traffic that will support your shop. And then uh, uh, the, the other stuff like dedication. And then probably one of the biggest things is just deep pockets. Make sure you have enough money to start this and finish it. Because it takes time, right? I mean, you, you don't you open. It's not like people believe you know you open, they will come right away. It takes time, right, Shannon? That's, I mean, you, that's very correct, Aaron. Because uh, Eric, uh, because you know when we opened, we you kind of get a bump because of the hey, you're new in the neighborhood. The neighbors will come out and support you a little bit, and it looks like hey, this is really started off well. And then the newness wears off a little bit, and you have to go into the daily grind of de- establishing your hours, your presence, uh, your service, and what in what kind of shop you're going to going to be and how you what you're going to provide and how you're going to do it so it, and through that time it can be very lean i mean a, quite a negative cash flow through those uh through those several months to six months it, do you agree with that sammy tell us yeah, a little bit absolutely it's uh, it, it takes a lot of patience and you have to believe on it because otherwise if you don't believe on it you, you're sure you're going to close down after three months it takes a long time to get like people to know you and to to trust you and uh, and also to have the social uh, 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 social communication with your uh, your your guests and and make them believe uh, on your products. It's uh, it's it's a tough it's a tough uh, uh, tough six months. I will say, Shannon, is that's correct. Good. I got a look different question here because you know whether you're a restaurant, whether you're a bar, whether you're you're a shop wine bar there's so many wines and there's this you know we run into wine distributors all the time and people with you know hundreds and 50 plus bottles of wine different wines on their menu how do you guys come up with okay well everybody knocks on both of your doors and say okay i'm going to take your wine i'm not going to take your wine you know real estate is at the premium right now you know everybody would like to have ten thousand square feet to house everything in, under the sun but you know you how do you guys pick wines that you know are going to be appealing to your clientele, and how do you know when to change, when to move it around? Uh, I want both of you to chime in on this. Uh, Shannon, would you care to start? Uh, Eric, I'll start. Yeah, one of the things we had to do and we figured out early on is you can't just go after the name brand wines. At least we couldn't because if you if they're found in the grocery store or some some other uh, retail settings that, like a liquor store, uh, you can't match their buying power, and so their your prices are. Or, or too high so we had to really work into a niche to start finding certain uh, wines but we also had to com- combine it with we know that people like cab we know that people like chardonnay we know that they like unoaked as well as oak chardonnay so we had to kind of balance a bunch of factors and start finding distributors that understood our business model and would work with us in that because we don't have lost leaders like a big grocery store next to us to, to so that we can do big discounts on wines and things like that so it was kind of a a learning experience that even we even paid some advisors and some people to take us through that but it was still a, a learning experience on our own part to, to figure out how to stock the store with the with the proper things hey sammy what about your wine bar what does amelie rely on to put that perfect mix together that attracts the customers and keeps them coming back potentially for something they just won't find on a mainstream basis yeah, it's always it's always a challenge to look for very something particular that you cannot find exactly in the liquor store or supermarket. It's always a challenge to find the right type of wine for the right people. And uh, we are always always tasting wine uh, at, uh, uh, at Amelie. Because, what a uh, we... horrible job you have! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but we always constantly uh, looking for something different that you can't find at. 
the corner store. That's 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 our uh, our 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 our, uh, our um, how you call that? I lost it. Uh, that's our uh, our point of view. It's like let's go find something that you cannot find in your liquor store. That's that's our point. So, and we try to find the good wine, a reasonable price, and uh, not to be very expensive because everybody, uh, uh, Amelie, it's uh, it's. Uh, it's a it's a, rest, a restaurant wine bar. They serve uh, uh, wine for everybody, every budget, every palate. So, and, and let's switch gears a little bit because Shanna mentioned something about education, and there are so many people in the country that are just desperate to learn more and understand more. They're not wine snobs; they're just wine novices. They don't know very much. So. Uh, Shannon, tell us a little bit about how do you educate the folks who come to the wine shoe and teach them about the business? Oh, you want to, we actually don't teach them much about the business. We teach oh, them about sorry. wine. Yeah, you teach them about wine. Absolutely. Uh, uh, actually, we try to make it somewhat informal. We have a very good instructor that's uh, that's worked on a lot of those wine credentials, but he's also a very good, inter, interacts very well. At, initially, we don't key so much on like what I would call genealogy, you know, like these two guys owned a, own a winery in California, then their son did this and blah, 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 blah. We kind of get more into some generalities like there's three kinds of wines in the world, the ones you've tried and liked, the ones you've tried and you don't like, and the ones you haven't tried. And you're trying to get the, thir- <laughs> and you're trying to get the third category into one of those two. And then after you've done it a while, you'll start finding wines in the second category, the ones you didn't like at first, that you, that you come back to. And through that, we kind of try to get them a little bit up to speed on some of the term terminology as far as like sweet and dry, oaky, fruity, acidity, and things like that. Not too heavily, but just give them an experience on trying some stuff. We In our classes, we do ask them to try some whites, try some reds, because we have so many people that go, I just drink red, or I just drink cab, or I just drink Merlot. We have a few little surprises out there, some Merlots that you'd never imagine would be done that way, uh, some some Chardonnays that are done very interestingly. And so we... we uh, um, work to, to that to that purpose and, and so you actually conduct though like many classes folks come in and sit down and go through that instruction yes Robin. we actually can go online and sign up for a class we try to have 20 people to come through in the night and they'll taste uh, five to seven wines just kind of depending on the character of the class sometimes uh kind of watch and see what they enjoy and what they work with and then if it's a good class and they like certain things we may have a little bonus wine and you know like a little bit higher end because we try to taste to a price point that we think you get your most bang for your buck and you know, like between the 10 and 20 dollar range because if you get much more than that you some of that that the, what you're buying is lost on the uh on on people who don't have an experience that if you get much below that then we're out of our market and into the kroger market so we have to uh, what i call the kroger market so we we try to teach and in, into that price range that's excellent and sammy um uh, shannon touched on something here that's important said we have a good instructor that makes people feel comfortable i know you're in a wine bar setting so you have wait staff you have different people how do you transfer that, that passion, that love of wine, to your staff and that translates to the customers and to, to the experience? We, 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 we always ask, the, the, you know, our customers come over, we always ask them what they like, if they like it oaky, fruity, dry, you know. And we, we, go, we go from there, you know. Uh, medium body, heavy, uh, light, you know. And we take, we take it from there and we try to give them the best that we know from the one selection that we have. We also have an Amelie. We have uh, what we call the flight. It's three sample of glass for $10. And you can sample the entire uh, wine list that we have um, by the glass. So uh, it's probably like 60 different wine uh, by the glass. So you have a lot of choice. So you, 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 can't, you can't go wrong when you try... Uh, let's see, when you try three different wine and, you know, you, 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 they tell you like, oh, I don't like this one, it's too dry, or I don't like this one, it's too fruity, and you go from there. Excellent. Shannon, you want to weigh in? Yeah, uh, Sammy mentioned something, he, you go in and you ask of what styles they like. You know, something we shy away from initially is the variety, varietal, I should say. Uh, we don't mention Merlots or Cabs or anything like that, just because people get wrapped so much into that. And a good grape can be made in so many different ways, it's surprising. One of our early uh, tests we did uh, when we were first open was tasting two different Chardonnays, a Chablis versus a, a South uh, Australian, very oaked uh, Chardonnay and said, okay, who likes Chardonnay? And half the people would raise their hand and the other half would say, no, we don't. And then we'd taste it and it turns out half the people liked it and half the people liked the other. 
but it was a surprise to the people who who uh, weren't Ch- Chardonnay fans who had never tried an unoaked Chablis style Chardonnay. So we uh, we we're like Sammy in, in that we don't we try not to key too much on the the type grape right off the bat. I- Mm-hmm. I, to- I totally 100% agree with you because if you tell them the grape, they oh, no, I don't like that. But if you don't tell them and you serve them and they say, oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's important, I mean, to, to, yeah, for the customer to, to be open-minded or to, to try to open their mind. I think that, that is your challenge that you're trying to do and surprise them with, with different thing and, and explore that and didn't realize that uh, – you know they would like something different, so I think that's the exciting part of going to to a wine place and and go for that challenge and everything like that. No. The the experimentation and the education I think are amazing, and both of you have called out that you're in very different parts of the country, so there's some regional differences. But it doesn't sound like someone has to pay a lot anymore to get a very good bottle of wine. Would you agree, Shannon? Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean that's. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff out there, and it's up to us, my, my wife and I, Nora and I, to go out and find that very good stuff. We traveled to, to Europe quite a bit looking for certain things with the, the importers and distributors, but you can find very good 10 to $20 bottles of wine out there nowadays. And Sammy, what about you? Uh, actually, I was quite surprised because uh, I went to Paris like uh, last December, and uh, I walked to this uh, one store. Uh, they, they're a chain, and they have like amazing, amazing different wine under twenty bucks, and uh, under twenty dollars uh, euros. And I was quite surprised because it's very unusual in the United States. You can find something like good enough under twenty bucks. It's very you have to look for it. Uh, well, we have to get him to the East Coast to the wine shoe, right, Shannon? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sammy, was that shop Nikolai's? Is that, is that the name of the yeah, shop? Yeah, Nikolai's, yeah. <laughs> oh. how, how did you know that one? <laughs> oh, just uh, over there researching. Uh-huh. Great, great wine connoisseurs. You travel to St. Tra- Pat, so this is interesting, all the way from coast to coast. All right. Well, we are coming up against a break, so I just want to remind our listeners that today's show is sponsored in part by Today's Restaurant. That's the food service industry newspaper. They are a We Sell Restaurant sponsor. Today's restaurant is the trade newspaper for the new food service industry in Georgia and Florida. You can get a free subscription delivered monthly in the mail by visiting their website at www.trnusa.com and complete a very quick online form. Well, today we are talking to wine connoisseurs. They have both a passion for wine and businesses that focus on the wine industry. We have Sammy Dita, who operates Amelie on the West Coast, and Shannon Wiley, who with his wife, Nora, operates Wine Shoe here in Atlanta on the East Coast. Remember, this is Eric and Robin Gagnon. We are the restaurant brokers, and we are attempting to both satisfy your appetite for acquisition feed the need for restaurant reality and serve up a recipe for business success we're talking about wine don't touch that dial we'll be right back after the break 